we get to meet a lot of great artists and a lot of great people and today is no different to that. We've got some legends in the house. It's Souls of Mischief. What's up guys? Yeah, what's happening? It is what it is. Um, so what, what brings you guys to the UK? Now we're out in Europe doing a European tour and we, we wanted to make sure we stopped over here. Uh, we're probably going to be rocking a free show over at the Carhartt spot too. So basically just to, you know, interface with our fans out here and, and, and do some press and continue the European tour. Which cities have you done and which ones have been your favorite? Last night was definitely legendary because I got to rock with one of my favorite groups, Dead Prince. It was their first time being in Paris, so it was dope. First to perform there and um, did Helsinki, Finland, which is pretty cool, you know what I'm saying? Because it's just so far away from where we are. Mm. Get love out there. So you guys are obviously going to be out here promoting a new album. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of sound can we expect from, from the album, from Montezuma's Revenge? Prince Paul. You know, if you if you if you know his track record, you know, whatever he, whenever he's behind the boards, you know, it's a uh, it's just authentic to the core hip hop music. You know what I mean? Cutting edge. It's just gonna, it's brand new, but it's you know, it's it, it has a lot of classic elements as well. You know, and then we got OPO production on there. Hyrule fans are very familiar with him and A plus as well as Domino. All did production on it too, so it's a nice mix of production on there. And then Souls of Mischief, always, you know, we haven't changed anything. We're lyricists to the heart, so, so expect a lot of that. I mean, one thing about this record is, uh, you know, there's a lot of people kind of trying to capitalize off of the era that we that we help, you know, to to bring forth. So, you know, it, as people are trying to capture that essence and recreate that vibe or whatever, we are that vibe. You know what I'm saying? And so we actually even enhanced it that much more with Prince Paul. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like if you're looking for that classic hip-hop style or whatever, you know what I'm saying, that people are always trying to put into words, you know, it's, it's something that you really can't describe. It's a feeling, you know what I'm saying? I think we kind of like we basically bottle lightning, you know what I'm saying, with the new record, Prince Paul and Souls of Mischief coming together. It's just... For me, it's a dream come true. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm just, I'm a fan of his. Yeah. So, and, you know, I've always been, you know, inspired by what my brothers do. You know what I'm saying? Lyrically and just what they thought process and everything. So even though I'm in the group, I get to listen to, you know, I'm a fan of it as well. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like with this record right here, you know, especially for like all the young cats out there that didn't get a chance to be part of that golden era. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, you get it. It's kind of like you got a second opportunity right now. But how did the, the collaboration come with Prince Paul for, for um, this album? I was out promoting for my solo record, I think it was like 2004. And uh, I was on tour with, with the Handsome Boy Marlin School. I went out with them and uh, got a chance to like build with Prince Paul. You know what I'm saying? He was there and um, we was just riding on the tour bus together and just kicking it in general, you know what I mean? But. I'm such a big fan, I was in my mind thinking like, damn, how can I ask this guy to, to give me some tracks or something like that? But, I mean, if you know Prince Paul, you know that he really doesn't, it's not a matter of just getting the beat from him. It's kind of like, you know, he does albums, you know what I'm saying? So, my request for what I wanted to ask him was on my, I felt like it was out of pocket, it was doing too much. But then he approached me and said, yo, man, I've been a big fan of Souls of Mischief and I always liked everything that y'all did. And he, he followed our career up to that point like he had the solo records and he had the, uh, all the Souls of Mischief records the uh, the hieroglyphics records so he was familiar with the, the, the progression that we had made and um, he was just like man I've always been a, I've been a big fan of you guys and I would like to um, work with you you know what I'm saying because he kind of was like he he knew that we were like a highly stylized group you know we focus a lot on styles and if you listen to like De La Soul or whatever, you know, they're really stylistic too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just try to work, do that type of album that's just like a, has like a, a, a original style, but it's, you know, it's real stylistic though. You guys came out at a time when out of the West Coast, there was a lot of G-Funk. G-Funk was almost dominating hip hop, particularly out of the West Coast. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you guys, Far Side, and then, you know, all the other guys that were coming out at that time had a very different sound. What is it you think that you guys were doing that made sure that you guys stood out? We just tried to do what we, we, you know, stay true to what we were raised on. I mean, you know, Dell had came out with Default, what, 91, 90, you know, years before the whole G-Funk era, you know? So 
we had already been in that sort of chamber. We was trying to go to another a level, and uh, really the first album was just a culmination of who we were as people for the first, what, 16, 17 years of our lives, you know? So it wasn't like we were trying something necessarily. We were just, hey, we're into these sort of quirky samples. We like making lyrical hip hop, not, not just rapping all over the beat, you know, but actually building up structurally the beat with, with rhymes. And uh, I mean, I guess we achieved that. Uh, I think the spotlight was on California and A&R's realized that there's more than just gangster rap coming out of California. And that, that made a big difference because it puts us far side, alcoholics, all sort of on this platform, like it was something new when, if you ask any of them groups, they've been rapping like that for 26, 27 years, you know? So it just was, the spotlight was, was on something besides the gangster rap from, from Cali. What is it about you guys that has kept you together for so long, kept you making music and just kept you relevant for so long? Oh man, I mean basically we, we were friends before we started making music, you know, it's, it's a mutual interest that we have but it's not the reason that we hang out with each other, we hang out with each other because we grew up together and know each other's families and kids and all that kind of stuff, so it's more of a family thing than a, a musical industry type thing and we'd probably be hanging out regardless of if we had records out together or not, so I think that makes all the difference, you know. Um, it's never been a question of whether or not we're going to be together as a group. That's not even, it never crossed our mind. Even when making solo records, it's like those are just projects, you know. I mean, it, it's just, we're like a family more so than just a, a musical group. I think most notably Souls of Mischief uh, are known for 93 to Infinity. You know, it's the record that you guys debuted with but also the, the single that blew and kind of put you guys on the map I would say did you expect that you'd get to the response? to be honest with you even before we recorded it I felt like that song that beat when as soon as A plus played that beat I felt like that that song had something special you know what I mean and then and then after it was done obviously you hear it you're able to step back and kind of like you know see it from a distance and then at that at the time we recorded that song we were already we had already seen the, the album like that because the album was pretty much done. I think we might have did one more song. I think we might have did like Bad in Practice or something after that, the remix. But the album was pretty much done, so I think we knew exactly what we wanted to do. And I think and then that song was kind of like it's like prophecy, kind of you know what I mean? Because it's like saying we're not going anywhere. We're we, we're gonna do this forever. So I think that's one of the things that the message and the feel behind that song why it's still uh, relevant. So it's definitely had an impact on us as, as DJs as well because we've got a lot of old school fans, a lot of old school hip hop fans, so it's, it's had a lot of impact on us. Um, you've been touring for many, many, many years, so we'll just kind of go a little bit lighthearted now. What's, what would you say is the, the craziest thing that you've experienced on tour? The, the, I see a little snigger over there. <laughs> <laughs> There's obviously something that, that pops up to mind <laughs> straight away. What, what would you say is, or, or, or will it need to be censored? I can tell you, but <laughs> I remember one time we were in Houston, okay, and uh, we were on the Tribe and De La tour, which was like our first major tour or whatever. And um, somebody just reminded me about this the other day, but I, I completely forgot about it. But that just goes to show you how much stuff happens on tour. But anyway, um, I think it was a bunch of artists standing out there. Like I think Scarface was out there, and a um, couple of the tribe, daylight cats were out there or whatever and then there's this big cascade like right in front of the hotel, big you know, water cascade mm -hmm. and then Tajay comes running out and like jumps into the cascade like <laughs> oh, this, I think he was in school then and he had like just finished his finals oh, wow. and, uh, <laughs> he was like I'm done, he just ran and, <laughs> and then everybody's looking like what the fuck Cause we, were all, we were all like you know, 18, 19 years old at that time. We were we were definitely the the the, 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 the young man. <laughs> hell of water through the hotel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I bet mean, I mean, you didn't know that story was going to be about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, I used to... <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there quiet going, please don't let it be that story. <laughs> yeah, I used to be an odd individual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's up? Souls of Mischief in the house. It's your boy Opio. Sto D. Tajay. Yeah, yeah, man, checking out the Love Soul DJs, man, you know what I'm saying? Love Soul TV. Wah, wah, blip, blip, blip.